it's been a really unique experience for me because I'm an environmental design and architecture major. Uh, so it's been really interesting to have this huge shift in what my workday looks like and what my creative practice looks like because we went through six hours in a wood shop every day, all day, which is how the most of my fall and first year of university went to me alone in my apartment blueprinting or doing conceptual work or just completely doing a 180 from my typical uh, from my typical practice and what uh, university expected of me. So I think it was both a very good and a very hard thing because I miss that. I love, love working with my hands and doing hands-on uh, work, model making, blueprinting, collaborating with my peers. So it was a hard thing to kind of have torn asunder, <laughs> kind of last minute, uh, very suddenly. But then I also really enjoyed the creative introspection that came with being able to work independently. I mean, but I'm not a special case. I'm sure that people in all different majors or if you're in high school, in high school, um, all had very unique and <laughs> different challenges, uh, suddenly having their school day completely, completely changed. I felt pretty good actually. I know that there's a lot of people out there that really struggle with not having sort of direction and one-on-one -on -one connection with the teachers, but for me, I felt that um, I was able to really develop a good work ethic, so I had a good experience with online learning. I think I was really lucky because I've always been really self-driven, and so it wasn't that difficult for me. I think, I think that it was a little bit weird, definitely, because it's a lot easier to learn with a teacher. But personally, I think I was still all right. But I know I was really lucky because a lot of people weren't all right with it. And it was very difficult for many people. Um, I feel like it's harder than actual school because I really enjoy like talking to people, getting like hands-on experience. I don't really like online school. I think obviously because of the circumstances, like you have to. So it's fine, but I don't really like it because I feel like it's you can learn so much better if you were actually in a classroom. And it also makes you a little lazier because you tend to do stuff later, you know, or do your homework late. It hasn't been too bad. I mean, I'm pretty antisocial usually, so it's not too bad not being around people. But I think that the only thing that I've really kind of had a problem with is I feel like I'm less productive when I'm by myself because it doesn't, it's weird not having that sort of like group mentality, do you know what I mean? Like usually when I'm at school with people, they kind of encourage me to do more and I have more motivation when I'm not just sitting around by myself. So I think that's kind of the one thing that I don't really like about it is I don't really feel as motivated to get things done as I would if there were people around me. Well definitely conflicted feelings on this. For me personally, I find that being back at home um, and working remotely has given me a lot of freedom. So that has been fantastic. Um, however, I think for me, the downside to online schooling is that I don't learn as well. Uh, when I was at school, I would drag myself out of bed um, and dash across campus to get to my 8.30 class. And then for the rest of the day, I'm in work mode. I am alert, um, not necessarily super awake, but my brain is on. Uh, I feel like at home that my uh, school life and my personal life overlap in a way that I don't really like. So yeah, online schooling um, has been difficult and a lot of adjustments, but seeing as how things are progressing, um, those are adjustments that myself and I know a lot of people will have to make. From what I've heard, there's going to be like, the school classes will be divided and in one week one part of the class goes and the next another part goes. So in that case, like you might not even see your friends and I'm just not sure how it's going to work. But I think it's better than online school at least. But I'm also a little disappointed because um, there's not going to be any clubs.
probably not sports. Um, no assemblies, I'm guessing. Yeah, and I'm just not sure how it's going to work. I also heard that they might be taking out French for that, and I'm willing to give up sports and clubs if they keep French, because <laughs> I think that's very important. I don't really think we're going to go back to school in September. I would love to go back to school in September. I really want things to go back to normal, but it's never going to go back to normal because this is normal now. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea that we go back to school in September because then we're going to have to wear masks all, all day. And we're going to have to stay away from our friends, so that's probably not the best idea. Well, I'd like to do it, you know, in the ideal world, but I definitely don't think we should because, um, you know, nothing's actually changed. There's no vaccine. Everybody's still getting sick. The virus still exists. And I think it's just an unnecessary risk to take. Um, I'd like to go back to school, but I don't know if it's really practical. There's a lot of ideas kind of being thrown around right now about whether it's going to be online or in person or kind of both. And I think for me, I kind of like the both idea just because I would like to go back to school and I'd like to, you know, be there in person again and see all my friends and stuff. But I also don't think that it's completely a great idea to have everyone at school at the same time if we want to, you know, prevent another sort of outbreak from happening again. And I don't mind the idea of kind of getting both online and in-person school. So yeah, I hope I get to go back at some point, but maybe not fully from the beginning. Yeah, I think for me personally, um, as a commerce student, I have the luxury of having all of my courses being online. So that means I can stay at home. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, going out, social distancing during classes, wearing masks, um, I'm sure that is another added stressor to already having to go back to classes in the fall. Um, so for anyone who does have to go back, I really sympathize. Um, but for me personally, I won't physically be at my school, um, which is a blessing and a curse. Um, so. My university is also having our fall semester online, so I will not be returning to school in September. And honestly, this time I'm really excited because now I feel like both me and my professors and my peers have had the chance to set up what, a, uh, what an online schooling could look like, especially in an art school or in a design school. So I'm actually quite excited about this fall. My opinion may change <laughs> once we get into it, but for now I'm excited. I think it'll be a unique experience. And it's kind of weird for me to think about it, how we're actually living through real history, I guess. Really trippy experience, but yeah, besides that and besides the uh, school problems and things, I think it's actually been kind of relaxing in a strange sort of way because obviously it's stressful, but you can't fixate on it all the time, or at least I can't because then I'd be way too stressed. And I kind of like, if anything, that it's given me some time to kind of sit back and get myself organized and work on hobbies and things that I don't usually get to work on. So I'd probably say free time. Um, I can't really say that it's had a large impact on me personally like it has other people. I'd say um, it's definitely shown me that a lot of people really don't care about helping other people and really just care about not being inconvenienced themselves. And by people I also include the government in this. <laughs> oh, that is a good question. I think that the biggest impact for me is the shifting definition of what it means to be social. So social used to be a lot of tight-knit group interactions, but now social means a completely different thing. It means making a lot of phone calls, texting, um, you know, hopping on Zoom calls. And while that seems so easy and we're so lucky to have all these communication uh, methods at the tips of our fingers, really, 
but at the end of the day it seems almost more difficult to keep in touch with people once you stop seeing them face to face i don't i don't really go out anymore we spend most of our time at home i know that right now in this day and age we're very lucky that we have tele telephones and internet and facetime and such but still it's not the same as seeing your friends face to face and talking to people so uh, mostly just staying inside and not being able to do things you used to do like go to school or like meet up with your friends that often at least like you have to keep your distance thankfully nobody i know has gotten the virus um so i think staying in is not that big of an impact because you know you have to do it given the circumstances so it's fine obviously so to be honest about I think a week and a half before the shutdown in Ontario, my I had a funeral for my mom who had just passed away uh, from cancer. And I think that the hardest part about all of this, or I guess the biggest impact is that I, you know, my family and I, we saw this coming. Like we knew that mom was going to pass soon. So I had a plan, <laughs> kind of as cold as that may seem. That's kind of how I deal with things. I had a method in which I was going to grieve and a lot of that involved being with friends and being out in the world, seeing my extended family, um, spending a lot of time with the external stimulus of both the general public and people that I love and care for. Um, so that was, I think, the hardest part and the biggest impact for me was to suddenly be left living alone in this apartment, not being able to go outside, uh, not being able to see my friends in person for the first for the first leg of this quarantine. Um, so I think that the way that it changed my grieving process without my knowledge or consent, <laughs> as dramatic as that sounds, I think that that was the biggest impact because that was definitely a more difficult thing emotionally and mentally to get through in a literally in an isolated state. So I think that that was definitely the biggest impact in terms of uh, quarantine and the pandemic. I try not to get too, too stressed about it because I know that everyone's kind of in the same situation and that obviously nothing like this has ever really happened before in our lifetimes. And I really hope that schools and later jobs are kind of going to try and accommodate that but obviously not everything probably will and it's kind of scary to think about just the sort of missed experience that I've had this year like this would have been my first year of IB exams and I don't really get that prep before next year which is kind of a scary thing to think about because now I'm just kind of going into it blind and yeah I mean I think it just overall that kind of missed experience I wish I'd had the opportunity to kind of do some of these things in person now instead of next year. I'm not sure. Um, because I'm only going into grade 12, not university, I think I'm definitely going to have a better future in the next couple of years than people who are going into university right now. The main thing I'm worried about is um, because I'm taking two IB classes next year that it'll be if the schools don't open up, that it'll be a lot more difficult to do online. Oof, these are hard-hitting questions. My future? I mean, from a practical standpoint, in the short term, it'll definitely um, impact my job prospects. Um, again, as a business student, most of my friends who are also commerce majors um, have struggled to find internships this summer because a lot of smaller, um, even medium-sized companies, you know, reasonably don't want to hire on more interns than they need to, do, than they need to during this time. So um, I've been fortunate enough to find an internship this summer, but I know that going into my second year, you know, who knows what can happen with recruiting and um, job prospects. I think in the long term, this pandemic is really going to change what it means to work an office job. I think that slowly remote working is going to become a status quo. So absolutely, I think that the pandemic is really gonna fundamentally change um, a lot of ways 
in which, you know, we live and function? I don't know. <laughs> I think that I think that that's how it will affect my future. I think that through all of this, I'm definitely a control freak. Um, but I don't think that I've ever had plans change at this mass of a scale um, in such a short period of time. So I feel like I actually feel better equipped for my future now. So I think that uh, this forced flexibility of the inherent uncertainty of not knowing what's going to happen next in society and in our world and with uh, work and school and social lives and all the parts that kind of make up our life. Um, I think that that has affected me personally a lot. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that will affect my future moving forwards because now I'm kind of moving forward cautiously but with fresher eyes. I think I'm less stuck in my less stuck in my ways as much as as much as I can be which is still a little bit stuck but less so. I am worried about the future because I am a student who wants to study abroad and actually looking into universities to study abroad. Sorry my camera. Um, and I feel like the future is very unclear so I don't know if I will even be able to like apply for a university abroad in this time obviously. Um, <laughs> So I'm very worried about that, <laughs> and I hope something can happen soon, where we, like, maybe like a cure or something. I think that the pandemic is going to affect the future immensely. Like, we're, it'd be, right now, it's kind of proved how it, important our essential workers are we've kind of proven that it's oh, we it's possible to work from home so i think nurses and grocery store workers they're going to be held in higher regard uh, a lot more people are going to start working from home instead of from the office um and i think a lot of people are going to be much more careful with the germs and stuff Um, all I'd like to add is that I think we should have never reopened anything in the first place and that we should just stay on lockdown or whatever, like, in quarantine until there's actually a better chance of not everybody getting sick. I hope everybody stays safe and wearing a mask in public or keeping your distance is not that big of a deal. Like, you don't want to die from this, so I think... Everything we're doing should be okay for now, but I hope in the future it gets better. Thank you! I think that the only other thing that I found really interesting about this whole phenomenon is most of my friends and the people that I surround myself with are also creatives or artists or designers or do some kind of creative work and it's been so interesting to see how it's uh how it's affected all of us so radically differently like some of my friends are like this is the worst thing that's ever happened to my creative practice i don't know if i can ever bounce back from this i'm in the worst writing rut painting rut whatever of all time <laughs> i have friends who actually myself included who are freelance photographers who lost a lot of work um and a lot of money from this pandemic because all of a sudden big gigs that were months in the making got cancelled um, but then I have other friends who are like I've never had this much time for introspection and it's completely changed the way that I go about my process and I feel like I've really found myself as an artist um, <laughs> so that's I think that's the my interesting personal observation coming from someone who's in the creative world even though that's so pretentious to say but um that's been really interesting to witness in myself and uh in my community because it's been so different for everyone and I also think that that just goes to show how we should uh, how we should interact with people I think that this is such a personally very interesting time for everyone and that no two people are going to have the same experience. Um, so I think that what it really boils down to is about listening to your community and your peers and the people that you love and uh, kind of you don't need to be in the same place emotionally to be able to help each other.
I mean, what a way to start a new decade, am I right? <laughs>